You've had a pair of fish that have been successfully spawning, but you've been struggling to get those fish fry to hatch and survive. I've got a few tips for you that might just make this a way easier process. Hello everyone, this is Bentley. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to more efficiently hatch some of your fish if you've been struggling after getting some of your fish to initially spawn. So whether this is Corydoras, Plecos, Angelfish, anything that's gonna lay eggs and you actually have to take care of those eggs in some way, that's what these tips are for. So if you're looking for a video that's gonna teach you like all the tricks you need to know to spawn your fish, this is not that video. If you have your fish spawning, whether on purpose or on accident, but you're not getting your babies to survive, maybe you're not even getting any hatching, you're seeing fungusing or something like that, this is the video for you. So let's start on the very first one, fungusing. This most commonly occurs because of an issue in our water parameters or limited flow around the eggs. So there's a couple ways we can fix this. So one of the first ways we can fix this is by moving our eggs after they've been laid to a specific container that's going to have a little bit of airflow. There's a couple ways to do this. You can do something super fancy like one of these this breeder boxes that sits in your tank and it has its own air system hooked up to it to move water through it or rely on your own tank's filtration. Or you can get a breeder box like this and there's, there's ones that go inside your tank, there's ones that hang on the outside, but all of them have some way in which they're taking advantage of water movement. The hang on the back ones or hang on the side or the front, however you decide to hang them, like this, have a little air stone, they push water in, water goes out, it's a slow trickle. The ones that sit in your tank usually rely on your filter flow. Uh, think like the net ones that are <laughs> the economy version of that nice Zis box. Maybe you have a more rugged fish like a pleco, and you're gonna use an egg tumbler. All of these are the same idea. We need water flow. Why? Very, very, very tiny bits of detritus and particulate matter get on your eggs, causing fungus. Now, if you're using something like this or one of the in-tank solutions where water movement is naturally occurring, where water is coming into the container and going out of the container, you don't necessarily have to do any kind of water changes. This is happening for you. But if you go the method of like a specimen container and you have something like, say, you're using something like this little air stone here in order to act as your water movement, in that case, because you have a closed system and you don't have the natural flow in your tank, you're gonna to wanna to change about 50% of your water each day. The easy way to do this is to use something like a turkey baster where you can really control it very, very carefully, okay? Now let's say that's not enough. Do an, I'm Bentley, I'm oxygenating, I, I've got water flow, it's not enough. Now we need to look at one of two things. If we're still dealing with fungus, we wanna look at some kind of chemical to prevent fungus. Historically, breeders have always used methylene blue, but that's become a little bit harder to find nowadays on its own. So if you can't find methylene blue, I need a tiny amount. We're talking a single drop into a specimen container, like nothing. If you're using a small tank, like a two and a half gallon or a five gallon, two drops. You want to barely color the water. And as your fish start hatching, you want to naturally make sure that you're water changing to get that methylene blue out of the system. If you can't find methylene blue, any of your major ick medicines, so ick X and, and the like, there's like Fritz versions, whatever, just check the label. If they contain a little bit of methylene blue, you're gold. One drop is all you need. That small amount is amazing for Brenda preventing fungus on your eggs. But I know for you folks who are in say Canada or something where you can't get easy access to medicines, I've even got a trick for you. A little bit of leaf litter. Now, most of us usually have like Indian almond leaves to get tannins. These happen to be some guava leaves that I have lying around. But regardless of what kind of leaf matter you use, Indian almonds probably the easiest. You want just a little bit of it in there because the tannins are a natural antifungal. This is nature's way to prevent fungus. You want to find something that doesn't break down too fast, 
puts a, just a tiny bit of stain in the water. You don't need like a whole Indian almond leaf in a specimen container. Break that thing into like quarters and put part of the leaf in there. What you want to make sure is that it's not breaking down too much. And if you do have fish like, say, Corydoras or Plecos, you can leave that in there after they hatch and let that be something that builds up all sorts of little biofilm and things for them to feed on as they finish their yolk sacs. This is a great, great way to feed those kinds of fish. And even some of your other, like, tetras and things like that might do this, but it's especially good for your ground-dwelling, bottom-dwelling type fish, okay? If you don't have a bottom-dwelling fish... Feel free to remove that stuff and just let the leaf litter be in there until they hatch and then remove it and slowly change water, but use the water from the parent's tank, especially if you've got this system like in the tank to keep its heating or something like that. Uh, and, and in a special container, I'm talking about like sitting inside the tank, not taking full water from the tank like you would with a breeder box. Okay. Use the parent tank water. This is going to be the best thing to help those fish slowly acclimate and get ready for whatever their new environment, whether you're going to raise them in with the parents because you have a relatively peaceful fish as long as the babies hit a certain size, or you're going to transfer them to some other raising tank. Using that water to start is going to be your best friend. Now let's talk about a completely different scenario. Let's go back, use that Corydora example. Let's say you're never seeing these fish hatch, but they're not fungusing, okay? You've tried methylene blue. And none of the eggs are staining blue. That is a sign that they're infertilized. But if those eggs are staying clear despite that, and even you're seeing like the little eyeballs come into them, but they're still not hatching, we might be dealing with a very different problem. For a lot of our Amazonian fish and our softwater fish, they're going to form a small shell around the outside of that clear egg. And when we pick the eggs and we feel them in our hand without like pressing too hard, we can kind of feel that natural slight amount of rigidity. I feel it all the time when I'm messing with rainbow fish eggs, or at least back when I used to actively breed rainbow fish, <laughs> I did. But you'll feel that. And it's something that can, if you're in really hard water, get too hard for the fish to break. So if you're in like the Midwest or something like that, where you have really, really rock hard water, super high mineral content, your TDS is like off the charts, your, your general hardness is way, way up. You're going to have to cut your water with some RO or maybe even some distilled water. Uh, if you got a local fish store that does RO water and you can buy it, usually you can buy a five gallon bucket, it's super cheap, right? And, and a lot of, a lot of fish stores have programs like this. So don't be afraid if you're dealing with those kind of fish and you don't want to necessarily buy your own RO unit, find a way to get yourself some RO, cut that hardness down naturally. That way there's not too high a mineral content and those eggs should start breaking for you. You can also use some of your uh, leaf litter to give your tannins and your kind of humic substances in the water because that does naturally lightly bring down and acidify your water, but that might not be enough if you're in extremely hard water. You know, any of you folks who naturally keep a lot of African cichlids and maybe you're trying to do Corydoras, this might be really tough for your natural water. Or let's say you're one of those people like me, you live in the Northwest, your water's super soft and you have to buffer it up. Make sure you're not putting too much crushed coral into your tank. Naturally bring some of that softness back into your water and you'll start seeing those eggs hatch properly, and you'll be able to raise those baby fish. That's it. Those are some of the most common tips on how to deal with issues in getting your fry from egg to hatchling. So what I want to know down in the comments, did you learn something new? Did you find something interesting? Did you got a trick that you want to try the next time you're dealing with your fish because you've been struggling? I'd love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a little like, consider sharing it, if you're not a subscriber, maybe even considering doing that and ring that little notification bell so you can get more tips and tricks videos just like this one. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome. You gonna come up? You gonna come up? Oh. oh my goodness, son! I was not expecting you to jump up. Hey, look, 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 look. Look, 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 whoa, 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 hey, you goof, okay, let's, let's chill, sit, 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 it's not a, look, it's not a treat, 
It's not a treat. It's an airstone. That's all on camera. That's going at the end of this video.